This right here is a lot of palettes. Hello everybody, my name is Elena. I love beauty and makeup, especially eyeshadow. In today's video, we're gonna be doing my eyeshadow palette collection video. I do these every six months. And usually at the end of the year, I do the declutter. So just letting you know, this is a collection video, not a declutter. This is a lot of palettes. So let's go ahead and get started. So I have 58 palettes, which is quite a bit for me. So let's go ahead and let me show you my collection. Now these are all random. They're not categorized. So I'm just pulling out as I go. And the first palette we have is the Natasha Denona Yucca palette. And this is what it looks like. I love this palette so much. This is my favorite palette out of my whole collection. We have the Grungy Tones, which is definitely my favorite. Really good quality. I love this palette. I also have a tutorial if you're interested. Next one, we have the Natasha Denona Retro palette. And this is what it looks like. This was my favorite palette for a very long time, but the Yucca palette did beat this palette. This palette is super good. I love the color story, really good quality. And I do also have a tutorial on this palette also. Next, we have the Meraki palette from Lorac. And this is what the palette looks like, super neutral. I do like neutrals, although I love color more, but this is really good quality, and I really do like the shimmers in here. Next palette we have is from Nomad, the Ghost Town USA palette. This is what the palette looks like. Super, super beautiful. Amazing quality. I love Nomad. They're such a good brand, and this palette is going to go ahead and restock in fall. And I just want to show you a couple of swatches. Now, I won't be doing a lot of swatches just because I feel like this video will be so long if I do. I'm just going to go ahead and do a couple. So here are the swatches we have. I hope it's getting on camera. We do have a duochrome right here. Now, I will tell you, though, the mattes are pretty, the shimmers are pretty soft, but it's definitely workable. Next palette we have is the Man Eater After Dark palette from Tarte. And this is what the palette looks like. It's not bad of a palette, but definitely, like, it's not one of my favorites. The mattes are okay. The shimmers are okay. I feel like I would like the mattes better than the shimmers. But overall, it's not a bad palette, just not my cup of tea. Next, we have the Booming and Glamming eyeshadow palette from Iconic London. And this is what the palette looks like. I have not used this palette yet, so I'm not so sure on the quality, but I do hear good things, so yes. And then we have the Cake Palette from Glamlight. And this is what the palette looks like. I love this palette. I have not used it in a hot minute, but I have definitely got to because the quality is so good. Now, this is the only Glam Light palette I do have, but I am hoping in the future to pick up more. Next, we have these ColourPop. It um, was in a trio. It's the Extra Celestial Collection. We have Clear the Air. And the palette looks like this. Very good quality. I really love this collection. Next, we have Coast is Clear. And this is what it looks like. This is probably my favorite one out of the three. Just because it has more mauve tones. And then we have Clearly in Love. And this is what the palette looks like. Super, super beautiful. Love the quality. Then we have Clay It Cool from ColourPop. And this is what the palette looks like. Very, very good quality. I actually really love this palette. I haven't used it in a hot minute, but it is definitely a really good palette from ColourPop. Now, there is a little bit of a cream right here, and it has dried out, but otherwise, the other shadows are really good. Then we have Sweet As Can Be from ColourPop, and it's the Winnie Pooh collection. And this is what the palette looks like. I love Winnie the Pooh. I am definitely a sucker for it. Like, that was, like, my favorite thing to watch as a child, and I just had to pick up this palette. Now, the palette quality, when I first tried it, it wasn't the best, but I did use it again, and I actually liked the quality. 
So I don't know what that was about, but this palette's actually not that bad. Then we have the Diamond Palette from BH Cosmetics. This was a birthstone collection, and I am born in April, so I got the April one. And this is what the palette looks like. Super, super stunning. I've only used this shade so far, but I like BH quality. And BH was bought by Makeup Revolution, and I haven't tried anything from BH since then. So I'm not so sure what the quality is like, but this palette is super nice. We do have a glitter, so just be careful. But otherwise, this palette is super nice. Then we have the NARS Extreme Effects Palette. And this is what the palette is looking like. I really love this palette also. Now, this is my only NARS palette. I do have, just because I do feel like NARS repeats their color stories quite a bit in other palettes. So I got this palette. I don't really need any other NARS palettes, but the quality is super good. So yes. Then we have On a Whimsy from ColourPop. And this is what the palette is looking like. I like this palette quite a bit. We have like mauve tones, some neutrals. We have this blue color, which I really, really like also. It's just a super good palette. Very good quality. I think ColourPop did a great job on this palette. Next palette we have is the Mandalorian palette from ColourPop. And this is what the palette looks like. I love this palette also. Kind of cooler tones, but there is some grungy in here. And then we do have a duochrome right here that is super, super pretty. Let me actually go ahead and swatch that duochrome for you. And I also feel like the quality is super good. So this is the duochrome. I love this. Super, super pretty. Next palette we have is the Hide Tide palette from ColourPop. And this is what the palette looks like. I love this palette. I feel like it's very underrated, but I love my blues. Super, super nice quality. This is an excellent palette. I feel like it's definitely good for beginners. So if you're just starting out with makeup, I would definitely recommend this palette if you want to try some blues. Next we have is Mobbin Up from ColourPop. And this is what the palette looks like. I love this palette too. Now you only can get this palette from Target. It's just a Target exclusive. But I feel like the quality is actually not that bad for a drugstore palette. Then we have the Child palette from ColourPop. And this is what the palette looks like. So for like a very long time, I wanted this palette. And like, I don't regret the purchase. But when I got it, two of these shades broke. And I was really upset. Now, I kind of have anxiety. So I didn't say anything to ColourPop. But I mean, the quality is still there. But I was disappointed that these two shades broke. But I was able to press them in. But if you like a green with some neutrals, I would definitely recommend this palette. Next we have is Sage the Day from ColourPop. And I do apologize, mine's a little messy, but this is what the palette looks like. And this is actually one of my favorite palettes from ColourPop. Mine is another one that we're gonna see later, but I love this palette. If you know me, I love my greens. So I do a lot of green looks, but there is some neutrals in here too. So if you're like a neutral person, but you wanna pop a green, I would definitely recommend this palette. The shimmers are really good. The mattes are really good. So I definitely like this palette. Would recommend it definitely for a beginner also. Then we have Fresh Greens from ColourPop. And this palette is also a Target exclusive. And I love the quality. I would feel like this is also super good to start out with like if you're starting out with makeup. I definitely recommend this palette also. It does have some greens but i feel like this is more of a neutral so i don't know why they call it fresh greens but i mean hey it's whatever they want to call it but i like quality i think it's pretty nice so yes then we have from sigma is the alice in wonderland palette this is what the palette looks like super super pretty i love this palette amazing quality now this is my only sigma palette but they are coming out with another one called cool neutrals and I actually feel like I might want to get that in the future. Now, there are some things from Sigma that I've skipped just because they weren't my cup of tea. But the cool neutrals, that actually looks pretty nice. So I might pick up that one in the future. Then we have the Too Faced Born This Way, the Natural Nudes palette. 
And this is what the palette looks like. This is one of my favorite neutral palettes. Not gonna lie, the quality's actually really good. Now, Too Faced has came out with some things that have not been the best, but I feel like this is probably one of the better things they definitely came out with. It is a slightly older palette, but the quality's amazing. I feel like if you're starting out with makeup, I feel like this would be a pretty good one just because I feel like it's easy to use. Then we have the Italian Spritz from ColourPop, and this is what the palette looks like. I do actually love this palette also. Now, there was some hard pan in the shimmers last time I used it, so that was kind of disappointing, but overall, the palette's super nice. I feel like this is, like, one of the only colorful, per se, pa um, palettes that Too Faced has came out with, but I feel like the quality's pretty good. But like I said, I did get some hard pan on some shimmers, but otherwise, I like this palette. And then from Odin's Eye, we have the Flora Story palette, and this is a collaboration with Makeup Just For Fun. And this is what the palette looks like. I love this palette also. I actually love Odin's Eye just in general. Like, Odin's Eye palettes are super good. I haven't been disappointed yet, but this palette, I feel like, I feel like Makeup Just For Fun did a super good job, if you know me. This is definitely up my alley for the color story, and the quality is super, super good, so yes. So we are halfway through, and I do just want to apologize now for, like, some of the palettes. They might not be in focus. I am trying a new layout that I usually do from my other previous videos, so I just want to apologize again. So next we have the e.l.f. Bite Size in Sugar and Cream. And I really love these palettes for going on trips. They're just super easy to use. We have two shimmers, two mattes. The quality's actually not that bad. Then we have Berry Bad from e.l.f. And this is what it looks like. So out of the four bite size I have, this is my least favorite. But it's still really, really good. Like usual, two shimmers, two mattes. Then we have Akasha Yu. And this is what the palette looks like. Super, super pretty. And then my favorite one out of the four I have is Rose Water. And this is what it looks like. I really like this one just because it's like more of my type of color story. And the quality is super, super good. Then we have the Signature Palette in Symphony from Ofra. And this is what the palette looks like. I love this palette. This is my only Ofra palette I have, but I definitely want to pick up some more in the future just because the quality of this is, like, really, really good. I wasn't expecting, like, I really didn't have a palette from them, so I didn't know, didn't know what to expect. But let me tell you, this definitely blew me away. Then we have the Armin Gorgeous from Jaclyn Hill and Morphe. And this is what the palette looks like. I actually have not used this palette. I've been wanting to, but at the same time, I don't know why I haven't yet. I just, I don't know. So I don't really know the quality of it, but I do like the color story. Then we have the Bubblegum palette from BH Cosmetics. And this was like a series called The Sweet Shop. And this is what it looks like. I did actually originally declutter this palette like two years ago, but I did bring it back in my collection just because I feel like this is actually a really good palette. Like the quality super good, like the color story I really like, and I feel like BH definitely did good with this palette. And since like BH was bought with Makeup Revolution, I just haven't gotten anything, so I kind of just want to keep some BH stuff just for memories of how good the quality used to be. Then we have the Sugar Cone palette from the Sweet Shop collection, and this is what the palette looks like. I feel like the quality of this is super, super good, just like the Bubblegum one, so yes. Then from Odin's Eye, we have the Stone and Rock palette, and this is what the palette looks like. I love this palette so much. I do have a tutorial with this palette, and I actually have used this palette quite a bit. Now, I did get it last year, but it was sometime around December, so I haven't had it that too long. But let me tell you, I have actually used this quite a bit since then. Like, I'm not joking, like, almost seven times. 
I just love this palette. Feel like it's a really good palette. Now there was another one called the Jewels and Gems. I didn't get that one just because I was a little on a budget. So I decided to get this one, but definitely not a disappointment. If you like the greens and neutrals and you like Odin's Eye, I would definitely pick this one up. Then we have from BH Cosmetics, the Smitten in Switzerland palette. And this is what the palette looks like. I will tell you, I have not really used this palette that much. I've only used two, actually, sorry, three shades, and that's it. But I do like the color story, and I feel like the quality isn't that bad either. I probably have to bring it out again to get my final thoughts, but I thought this palette wasn't that bad. Then we have the Avocado Toast palette from BH Cosmetics, and this is what the palette looks like. I like this palette quite a bit. Now, I did get rid of the Mimosa one just because I wasn't using it, but this one is definitely really, really good. I don't know if you can get it anymore, but I feel like BH definitely did a good job with this palette. And then we have the Blueberry Muffin Palette from BH Cosmetics, and this is what the palette looks like. I love this palette also. This was actually one of my first eyeshadow palettes that I got that was colorful, and I like this. Like, it has more memories than usage in it, but I feel like BH did a good job with this palette also. I have two more piles to go, so bear with me. I do apologize if this is a long video, but I really like longer videos, like collections and declutters, just because it's something in the background, and I do like seeing other people's collections. So I just want to let you know we are almost done. And this is the Olive Palette from Ciate London. And this is what the palette looks like. Now, I do have the sleeve just because a shade didn't come in broken and it does get everywhere. But this palette is pretty okay. I like the shimmers more than the mattes. Like, the mattes aren't really good, but the shimmers are super, super nice. So that's why I kept this palette. But I feel like I just haven't really used this that much. So this is like definitely going to be one of the palettes I have to use before my declutter. Then we have Light My Fire from Too Faced. And I do apologize, this palette probably won't be in focus and will probably be a little blinding just because of the background. But I do like this palette. Now, I did have more Too Faced palettes, but I got rid of quite a bit last year from my declutter. But this one, I like the quality. So I decided to keep it. It's definitely like a fall vibes and I love fall. So this is definitely a good palette for the fall. Now you can use it anytime around, but I mostly use this just for fall. But like I said, the quality is super, super nice. So Too Faced actually did a pretty good job with this palette. Next we have is the Earth palette from the Bad Sight Zodiac collection that Melt Cosmetics did. And this is what the palette looks like. Now, I am an Aries, but I didn't really like the color story of the one because it was more red, and I just don't look good in reds. But I felt like this is, like, one of the good ones they had. Now, this is the only Melt palette I have, but there was one that came out just, like, recently. It's, like, a 420, I think, of, like, purples. Now, that one, I actually might pick up in the future. That one actually looks pretty good. But this one is super, super good, and I actually really love the quality of this. Now, I've heard Mel is a hit or miss, but I felt like this palette definitely was a hit. Next we have is Daisy Does It from ColourPop. And this is what the palette looks like. This is my favorite ColourPop palette. As I was saying with the other palette, this one's definitely my top number one. I made such a beautiful look with this. Like, it was so good that I can't even explain it in words how good it was. And I was just beginning with makeup. Like, you see this? Yeah, that's a big ass dip right there. I just love this palette so much. I would never get rid of this, even if like, it's like eight or 10 years old. It would just be with me for the rest of my life. Then we have the Control Alt Glam palette from ColourPop, and this is a collab with Mariah, I think. Pretty sure it's Mariah. I can't really um, tell what this says, to be honest, but it is a collab um, palette. And I just want to um, have a little disclaimer. 
if that's not the person i want to apologize please don't come at me in the comments i do apologize sincerely i can't really read it so i do apologize now but this is what the color story looks like i love this palette also i did just get it recently like about five months ago maybe and i actually really like this now there is like a shimmer but a pressed glitter now i thinking this is the pressed glitter that ColourPop is doing now that is like very fine but it's actually not that bad i just want to let you know the quality of this is super good shimmers and mattes but i'm feeling like this is maybe a pressed glitter next we have the solmon 2 palette from odin's eye and this is what the palette looks like i love this palette also like i've used this palette quite a bit now i'm not so sure what's going on with this shade right here like it's not hard pan because i swatched it like maybe two months ago and it swatched fine but i know for a fact that i did not put a dip in here so i'm not so sure what's going on but i really like this palette odin's eye did such a good job with this palette amazing quality amazing color story then we have the little ghost palette from Odin's Eye, and this is a collab with Angelica Nikovis, and this is what the palette looks like. I love this palette. Super, super good. Now, there is another palette with this collection, and out of the two, I like this a little bit more just because I feel like you can make looks with this better than the other one. But let me tell you, when you combine both palettes, you can make amazing, amazing looks. The quality of this super amazing. I just want to congrats her again. I don't know if it's available, but if it is, I will try to link it down below. If I don't link it down below, it's probably because I forgot. But this is super, super good. I love this palette. I do just want to apologize if my voice goes in and out. Like, I've been doing this for quite a bit. So, yeah, I do apologize. And this is the other palette I was talking about. It's the Trick or Treat palette with Odin's Eye in the Cloud from Angelica Nikovis. And this is what it looks like. Super, super pretty. I'm not going to lie. It is pretty. The quality is super good. But the color story, it's just a little harder to work with. But let me show you both palettes side to side. Now, I'm hoping I do get this in frame. If I don't, I apologize. But I love this just like this like combining palettes you can make so many looks so i did decide to move it this way just so you can probably see it a little better now as i said combining these palettes you can make like a lot of looks with this and i just like love this so much like the collection she did was a super good collection i also got the lipsticks like i got the whole collection so yes and then we have the first collab that she did with an odin's eye and it's the hella palette and this is what the palette looks like. I love this palette also. Like, this was probably one of my few of first palettes I have. And I just really like this. Like, you have some greens. Well, a lot of greens. And then you have some pinks. And I just really love this palette. I will tell you, though, I feel like this comes out a little peachy. Now, it is like a white pearl lesson type of shimmer. But it does come out peachy when you do use it on your eyes. I do just want to say that. And to be honest, I don't think you can get this palette anymore. But if you have the palette, I just want to let you know. Then we have from Nomad is the Feta de Prince palette. And this was based on France. So if you don't know, Nomad does palettes based on like locations they go to. So I just want to let you know. But I love this palette so much. Also, the quality is really, really good. And this is just, like, a really good color story. Now, when I first used it, I didn't like it, but I used it again, and I thought, like, this definitely changed. Like, I don't know, maybe it was my mindset that changed, but this palette is super nice. I don't think you can get it anymore, but you can always shop your stash with other palettes. But super, super nice. Nomad did a, such a good job with this palette. And then we have the Your Golden palette from ColourPop. And this is what the palette looks like. I love this palette so much. Now, this is the only mega palette I have from ColourPop. I do want to get That's a Mood palette, if I remember correctly, that's the name. But this palette, super, super nice. There are some repeat, repeat shades, but I don't really mind just because the quality is super good. And I do use this quite a bit if I have to do a neutral look. 
Now you do have a pressed glitter in here, but this pressed glitter is actually really nice. Like it's fine, so it's not too chunky, but overall the palette, super good. So we have the Loy palette from Natasha Denona. And just letting you know, we are on the last pile. And this is what the palette looks like. Now I'm pretty sure this is just a Boxy Charm exclusive palette, but I could be wrong. Now I don't have Boxy Charm anymore just because when Ipsy like took over, I felt like it just wasn't the same. But that's just my per personal opinion. And I'm totally not saying anything bad about the brand because I think like Ipsy does a really good job. But for me personally, it just wasn't worth the money. But this is what the palette looks like super super nice i actually like the quality i don't think the quality is that bad so yeah then we have the cupid palette from natasha denona and this is what the palette looks like super super nice palette i will tell you though this shade was a little patchy but otherwise the palette itself was super nice now i'm pretty sure this one is also boxy charm exclusive but like i said i'm not so sure but the palette it's pretty okay then we have a twist of slate from ColourPop, and this is what the palette looks like now when i first used this palette it was absolutely terrible not saying anything bad about the brand but i'm pretty sure i got a dud just because when i watched other youtubes review it review it they like said it was really really good so i think i got a dud but i do want to try this palette one more time before i do declutter it but I haven't used it since. I really need to. So I can't really say anything about the palette. But the first time I used it was not good. Then we have Set in Stone from ColourPop. And this is what the palette looks like. This was a collection with the Twisted Slate. It was like the rock collection or something. I don't remember qu quite short. So I do apologize. But this one was a lot better than the Twisted Slate. You do have a cream right here. And the cream is all right, just like that Clay It Cool palette. But I really do like the shimmers. The shimmers are actually super, super nice. So if you're a beginner, I would definitely prefer this palette. Then we have the Cat's Pajamas palette from Laura Lee. And this is what the palette looks like. I have not used this palette in a hot minute. I really like the looks I did when I used it. But I just haven't used it since then. And I feel like this palette... I just don't really use it, so it's probably going to be decluttered when I do my declutter later in the year. But it's not a bad palette. I like Laura Lee, but this palette just haven't been used, and I feel like it's not getting the love, so it definitely needs a new home. Then we have In My Elements palette from Item Beauty, and this is what the palette looks like. I do apologize if I'm blinding you. Now, the palette's super, super nice. Like, I actually really like this palette. Now, some of the shimmers do crumble, but it's not a big deal. But I thought the palette was really nice. Now, I don't know. I heard somebody say that Item Beauty might be going out of business. But I looked it up, and it didn't say anything. So I don't know for sure. But I did get this in BoxyCharm. The mattes are super nice. I actually thought this palette wasn't that bad. Then we have from Too Faced the Cinnamon Swirl Palette. And again, I might be blinding you. I do apologize. But this palette, I really love. Like, this is one of the few first palettes I got. And the quality is super, super nice. Now, my lid doesn't shut. So I do have to rubber band it together. But that's not going to stop me from using this palette. The palette's super nice. It still smells really, really good. So, yeah. And this is the Honey Palette from Urban Decay. And this is what the palette looks like. I love this palette also. This is like probably one of my top 15, 10 palettes I like. I feel like the quality is super, super good. Now, it's not like bam, wham in your face like the shimmers. But it's definitely really good just if you want like a subtle look. I really like it. Quality super nice. So, yes. Then we have this Naked palette from Urban Decay, and it's in collab with Robin Eisenberg. I don't know what the palette's really called. It could just be called this, but I do apologize. But this is what the inside looks like. And this is, isn't is really all, all there, to be honest. 
I used it and I just, I don't know. I don't really like it. I mean, it's not bad per se, but it's probably going to be decluttered in my declutter later in the year. Now, I'm not saying anything bad about the brand, but just not my cup of tea. And then lastly, for my collection, we have the Adept Cosmetics and Heather Austin palette. And this is what it looks like. Super, super nice. Amazing quality. I love Heather Austin. She's such a good content creator. And she did such a good job with this palette. And let me tell you, the shimmers in here are golden. Like, I don't know what to tell you, but I definitely want to get another Deb Cosmetics palette. Just because I only have this one and I want to try other qualities, I guess. But this palette is super, super amazing. And I don't know if you can get any more. But if you can, I would definitely pick it up. But I'm almost like 99% sure you can't. But I love this palette, and um, I just want to congrats Heather for it. So, yeah. And those are all my palettes. I just want to thank everybody for watching the video. If you did like the video, don't forget to leave a thumbs up. It helps me a lot. Don't forget to subscribe. And you guys have a wonderful day, and thank you so much. Bye.